welcome back to Woman Crush Wednesday right here on Y in the morning. At Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at all matters pertaining life coaching. It's an all-round uh, scenario of coaching from relationship uh, to youth mentorship. And uh, so make sure you stay tuned because this is a conversation you don't want to miss out. They say that a good coach can change a game, right? Uh, and a great coach uh, can change your life. So in studio, I'm joined by Grace Destiny. She's a life coach, dating coach, relationship expert, youth mentor, family therapist, and corporate trainer. Grace, welcome to our studio. Thank you very much, Michelle. Your list is endless of your profession where you lie on. All right. Thank so how are you doing this morning? I'm very well. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here mm -hmm. and to meet you in person. Oh, I'm you're, you're a very beautiful girl. You are actually theming out the colors. The oh, place really? is all bright. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So for someone uh, who is joining us mm -hmm. and uh, they, don't, they don't know who Grace is apart from the life coaching and everything, where did you actually... Uh, you know get into the journey of being a life coach what interested you into coaching uh one thing i know is that our journey of purpose does not begin somewhere where does it begin it begins before we were born okay you come as an answer to a question so the question must be there for the answer to be created mm -hmm. so what i i believe is that if i, if I try to trace from the training point mm -hmm. I'll be limiting myself because i think since i was a very young person i've always desired to see people do well I've always desired to see problems solved in people's lives, even as young as started three. That is nine years, eight years old. Mm -hmm. But when I grew up, the first instinct that struck me into this is when I went to campus. It, it was, as I said, I've had it all along. But when I went to campus, I was invited to do a course that I didn't like. Which course is I actually that? didn't even know what was it all about. Mm -hmm. I'm a social scientist, that's mm -hmm. my foundation. So when I went, I had this anthropology, this sociology. That is not what I had had as I was growing up. I knew this law, mm -hmm. this medicine, this engineering, and that was it. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, I never wanted to attend class. So I started interfaculty transfer, moving from one um, block to another, looking for the interfaculty transfer. Then boom, it was time for cuts. And I had to sit for a cut in a particular course. So I had to go back to what I was invited to do in campus. I was in Moy University. Mm -hmm. And when I went, I started attending classes and reading notes, and I was like, this is something I like. It's about the society, only that nobody had told me who I was and what I was invited to do. But by a good coincidence, I'm a society person, I'm mm -hmm. a people person. So I started loving the cause, and I wondered who else is lost like I was. Some people are lost in a good way, mm -hmm. let me say this. Just to find themselves. Like, you can do very well in medicine, uh, sorry, in languages, mm -hmm. sciences, and you're invited to do medicine. And the, the whole village, we live and throw a party because our daughter, our son, is going to be a doctor. But are you really a doctor in the inside? Do you enjoy treating patients? Do you even love yourself when you're sick? Can you handle sickness from another person? So I realized that people are lost in life. We chase the wrong things, and that is where I realized we need life trainers. Life skills have no teacher. Life is a school that has no teacher. We do guesswork, and by the time you get it right, you are 60. How much can you do after you've gotten it right? And this is time. what takes yes, time. This is what created the interest of life coaching in me. Mm. And here I am. All it's right. a passion. All right. Mm -hmm. So for someone who is watching us and they don't know who is a life coach. Yep. <laughs> someone who helps you to go through life. It's like a guide. You see, when you go to a country or a place where you're not familiar with, mm -hmm. you require a tour guide. A life coach is simply someone mm -hmm. who helps you navigate through life easily and smoothly, trying to introduce tomorrow today, so that by the time you're facing tomorrow, you're equipped for it. People confuse counselors and life coaches. What is the difference? The difference is this. A counselor is someone who comes in when a problem arises and they help you solve the problem. A life, of, a life coach is someone who goes ahead of you and creates awareness of the problem. 
so you will not you will not enter into the problem okay and so i feel like a life coach is more important <laughs> <laughs> i think both that but let's look at is it then that brings the the aspect of it's a necessity to have a life coach in your life it's a necessity so that you can avoid it's the a, time it's a, it's wastage a basic need. it's a basic need unfortunately Which, uh, it, not many people really know that we go to school for every other thing mm -hmm. we train for what to do for the rest of our lives but how to live that life we don't even know that's why we have people who are great professionals academic giants but they can't handle themselves live alone relationships live alone families they just can't handle themselves mm -hmm. life coaching is a need like food shelter all right. Have, has there been a, a situation whereby you have a, you have had a client and you guys you know took up the session, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on. T has there been a situation whereby n there was no change in their life and they felt like uh, actually life coaching isn't for me? I don't have such kind mm -hmm. of a person. Oh, wow. Maybe, maybe there was no change, but they never told me. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing to know. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to be a problem and you don't know. Like, if you attended sessions and you realize you're not changing, then you withdraw and you'll not tell me, how will I know that you changed or you didn't? Because change is gradual. Mm -hmm. I can't start sessions with you today and tomorrow I expect change. That will be plastic. That will be PR, trying to please me. Mm -hmm. But change is something that comes gradually and you confess about it. So if someone has not confessed not changing, I tend to believe change occurred. Mm -hmm. That is why maybe they terminated the session. Mm. But actually what I can say, with all humility, success has been there. Okay. Big time. Okay. That's why I'm still consistent, persistent, and holding on to this because I believe I can do it. And okay. I do it. All right, Grace. <laughs> Let's look at... Um, for someone uh, who is wondering, like, why would I need a coach? Mm -hmm. Because my life is going on as I had planned mm -hmm. it. Though, though it has not been like uh, swiftly, but you know, uh, it's all good. Why would I need a coach? Who needs a coach, by the way? Everybody needs a coach in mm -hmm. one way or another. If you're a business person, you need a business coach. When it comes to real life issues, for example, we have two major decisions to make in life. Mm -hmm. And this is majorly where you need coaching, and that is where I, I normally um, dwell in mostly. The two major decisions that you make in life is what to do for the rest of your life. Majorly, people think like, as long as it's giving me money, it's worth my life, it's worth my time. But I'm of a different opinion. Money is the lowest level of achievement you can have in life. That doesn't work very well with my African sisters and brothers because poverty is the greatest worry of every person, starting from parents to children, going to school, the teachers, everyone tell, tries to tell you, go to school, study well, get a job, and fight poverty. So we keep fighting one problem, but we keep ignoring the others. Fulfillment is the number one achievement in life. So what to do for the rest of your life has nothing to do with how much money you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You realize that kids will be told, go and do this course, it's very marketable. Mm -hmm. that, fine. Is the child equipped for it? Is the wiring in that person exactly what they need to go and do that job? Or are you training them something against the grid? You know, against the grid. Something that you're supposed to go this way, but they are going backward. Number two, the second question, or rather the second decision is, who to live with for the rest of your life? <laughs> Your partner. <laughs> Your partner. Who really teaches men to be husbands and women to be wives? My sister Jerry has talked so powerfully. Mm -hmm. I was listening and watching. And I have loved what she has said. We have so many excuses that are based on men are, women are. Who made them that? Who makes you conclude that men are and then women violent are. and that women are money-minded? Kikuyu women are money-minded. <laughs> you, you Where did that what? mentality come from? It's a mentality, but it has been fueled from somewhere. Exactly. And what I usually say is that culture is a mantle forwarded from one generation to mm -hmm. another. And unless people intentionally break the culture, 
things will never be and different. And actually intentionally be aware that the culture yes. exists. Be aware of the culture. Look, analyze the culture. Distinguish the good and the bad. Then discard the bad and hold on the good. The only problem we have is that when it's culture, you either take the whole of it or you leave it. Okay. And because you have to live within that society, you take the whole culture, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. It affects us. We know the right thing, but we can't. Like, for example, today is a GBV. We, that's what we are moving on with. Mm -hmm. Look at girls, the girl child. Everybody feels like the girl must answer to some rules. And the man must make the rules. <laughs> So, so at some point, there. if you really don't get mentorship mm -hmm. and coaching to make you, like to define you very well, so that you can understand the thin line between humiliation and submission mm. as a woman. Today is WCW, so Absolutely. we can mention women as many times as possible. Yeah. You will be sat on, lied on, stepped on, and everything. Because you don't know yourself. You don't know yourself. You don't know so what whatever you stand up Yes, if yeah. you came here, you didn't know your name is Michelle. I came and called so you Mary, goes you'll on. answer. I call you Patrick, you will say yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's how we are with our lives. Okay, I would like to find out, because mm -hmm. um, um, back in campus, and everyone, I'm so sure young people, mm -hmm. uh, if you have access to internet, mm -hmm. that these YouTube videos mm -hmm. that usually thrive on uh, just uh, speaking about uh, life in general, mm -hmm. pushing you to for hard work, mm -hmm. and then there's always the background mm -hmm. music, which yep. is always about you know three. I know, I know. So <laughs> you're a lot of heat. Exactly. <laughs> the enthusiasm, you are at a high space, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after you watch a couple of videos, then you go back to your life. The reality. Like, we ah, took a ground. We took a ground. <laughs> this will be like, yeah, like you're watching these the motivational yeah. videos, but now to execute is totally different. How effective are these videos that we watch? Mm -hmm. And what is, the, what is the problem that we get all enthusiastic and, you know, thrill, motivated? Mm -hmm. You leave that place feeling what like you're the that? queen of the world. Exactly. And when you go back reflecting uh, mm, to the reality of life, yeah. things are so quite different. The problem is motivation is good. Mm -hmm. Inspiration is good. But empowerment is more powerful. Empowerment is more individual leveled than motivation. You sit in a place, 500 of you, you, someone comes and tells you, you are the number one. Now you wonder, yes. I want you to look at it this, this mm. way. Someone comes and talks to us in a motivational hall and says you are the number one from the day one. Mm -hmm. That's what we tell people. We tell people you're when your father released, tip. yeah, above and not beneath, mm. that is for the Christians. Mm. When it comes to biology, you realize that your father released something that was three millions in count, and you of course won. That's why you are the one who fertilized your mother's egg. <laughs> yes. So you are number one from day one. Mm -hmm. Now we are seated at a hall, in a hall, 500 of us. Someone comes and, tell, and tells us you are number one. So who is number one among the 500? Everybody feels I'm number one, I'm number one. 500 people. Mm -hmm. Then we walk out of that place and we go competing for equal opportunities. Oh, yes. So who is now number one? That's what we're talking about. Number one is that person who, after leaving the hall with a lot of motivation, went and looked for the real deals. How do I get this number one? Am I prepared enough? Because actually success is when opportunity meets preparation. The only problem is that we are told we are puffed up in the mm -hmm. head. You are number one. Nothing can shake you. Nothing can. Mm, you are this woman. You are mm -hmm. the. Uh -huh. So what makes you exactly that? That is a word that has been spoken. How prepared are you for this? And that is where the rubber meets the road. Because you have to do something. And something must happen in your life. That is where coaching comes in. Someone must face you and tell you you are very intimidated young woman. Mm -hmm. You are beautiful but you don't know. Mm -hmm. So rise up and become. Then that person will help you on how to rise up, how to become. And maybe you took it as an insult at the yeah, first time. definitely. But you see, when you have purposely come to a coach, mm -hmm. you are coming to say, here, I am, mold me. So when I come and tell you, I don't like the way you walk. You walk looking so intimidated. Someone will look at you and tell you, I don't like the kind of makeup you do. <laughs> we are all in makeup, but there's makeup and there's makeup. Mm. I usually say that. Okay. There's makeup for enhancing your beauty, mm -hmm. and there's makeup for trying to change yourself completely. Because when you are not made up, you feel like you're not even existing. So how can I give you the confidence to love your skin as it is? How can I give you confidence to love your eyes, your teeth, and everything? Whereby you don't get defined really by the outward looks, 
but some capacity is built inside the inside of you so that you can be able to say regardless of how my outward looks like I am a potential person from the inside that is where everything goes wrong mm -hmm. nobody is there willing to help a child a boy child or a girl child to become look at our men we have very potential men nobody told them they are powerful and the only thing they were introduced to was what is between their legs and they think that is what is defining them so when they get a few coins because i call them coins mm -hmm. they think they can sleep around with every woman because that is the only thing that defines them men your definition goes, is bigger it goes than back that. to how you're being brought up yeah. and the kind of information what that you, you saw fed. from other men as they were raising you all right so let's pick going back to your session so mm -hmm. how long does a coaching life coaching session take and uh, what determines the time frame what determines the time frame is where you're getting that person from there are people who are already somewhere so you just need to cop to do uh, to remove a few cobwebs and then you you're good to go that can do a month a, a perfect Taking someone from, diff from the lowest point can go for even one and a half years, depending on how many sessions you're having per month or mm -hmm. per week or like that. But what matters is even the ability to grasp the information. Mm -hmm. I usually say doing and undoing is inevitable. Because I'll meet you today. The, 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 the environmental voices are talking to you in every minute of your life. Mm -hmm. You come to my office, we talk, we chat, I, I, I make you feel important, I remind you of who you are, and you leave that place even bouncing, yes, feeling stop. so important. Mm -hmm. But then you go home and meet the same people who have crushed your spirit. Okay. They tell you other things. So what I've done will be undone. Okay, before we continue, mm -hmm. allow me to ask this question. Yeah. You said, you spoke about, you speak to this, your client that mm. is, you give a you know, just cast them up, give them the fact that, tell them how good they are in terms of after listening to their mm -hmm. story and everything. Mm. Is there work to be done? Because at the end of the day, just for there to be change, there has to be work that has to be there done. Has to be do you sit down with your client and tell them that you have to, sub to, have to do A, B, C, and D? Definitely. My first uh, um, indicator of where we are going with a person is how much they know about those two questions that I said. And you will never answer those two questions, or you'll rather not be able to make such decisions unless you know who you are. Mm -hmm. So every person that comes to Grace Destiny, and those who are watching and they have been with me, they know that. I try to find out who do you think you are. Not who people have told you to, that you are. Mm -hmm. Who do you really think you are? Because who you think you are is who you become. And the beginning point is, who are you? The first thing mm -hmm. I ask you is, who are you? And people will tell me, I'm Michelle. Mm -hmm. But that's your name. Who are you? And most people, 90% of them that have come to me are blank in that question. They can't explain themselves for five minutes. They can't describe themselves for five minutes. Some of them are 20s and above. For 20 years, you cannot describe yourself for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Women. You'll find a woman who will come to me and tell me, I am Mama so-and-so or Mrs. so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. So you're only defined by marriage and childbearing. <laughs> so who you are, who are you? So, so you take it back start, to the personal level. Yes, it starts with who you believe you are. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing that we try to change. Mm -hmm. Before you even work out for something beneficial to your life, you must have, first, first of all, have a definition. That mm -hmm. identity is what propels you. Okay. When someone calls you a doctor, you rise to the occasion and treat the sick. When someone calls you a lawyer, you walk to the courtroom and defend someone. That's what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your definition will determine your move and your actions. Mm -hmm. So we cannot go to actions first before we define who we are. Okay. And the picture you have about yourself will determine so much. Someone will come here and tell you you're so beautiful. If you don't believe it, you'll never feel it. The voice from the inside is always louder than the voice from the outside. So we try to, first of all, change the voice that is in the inside of you. And that is the capacity we build. Mm -hmm. We build the capacity of believing in yourself. And what happens, especially people who come and they, maybe they are brought by their parents or their relatives, and they come because they have really lost it in life. Some of them even neglect themselves mm -hmm. health-wise, well-being. They are not tidy. They are just they are unkempt. And you realize that what, that person, you, I'll never tell them to take a shower. No, I'll talk to them from that point. Because it's not just from there, it starts from the inside. So it starts from the inside. The and I love it when every change comes from the inside. So I don't tell you to take a shower. But when we meet for three, four times, then you come shaved. Mm. I'm like, wow. You can see the change. Yes. 
How does one know <laughs> that a particular coach is suited for me? Because we have numerous coaches. We have numerous coaches. So how can we find out if they're credible? Because we, are, we of course, there is uh, fraudness out here. It's actually. So how can we <coughs> know that this particular coach is credible? Then uh, that it, the person is suitable for me. We have several uh, ways that you can get a coach. We have online uh, advertisements. We have media like here. We have referrals. Normally, I believe so much in referrals. Because if I go to a coach and I get the benefit I'm looking for, referring someone is like inevitable. Because I'll be glad to say someone uh, helped me and I would like that person to help you. We have so many coaches. Normally, what I usually advise people, I don't tell people that I'm the only one you should come to. Mm -hmm. I even do a lot of referrals, depending on where I am based, like geographically. One way of knowing a real person, that person, first of all, is not interested in the money you're paying. Mm -hmm. I'll explain my criteria of work. It's not like I don't get paid. I get paid because that is what I do for a living. <laughs> but when it's a passion, mm -hmm. we have two types of people in every sector of life, even here. They are, they are um, whatever, newcasters, yes. we have presenters, directors, we have directors, we have teachers, we have lawyers, doctors, mm -hmm. everything. We have two sets of people, the professionals, purely professional, and the passionate professionals. Okay. <laughs> purely professionals and passionate professionals. Mm -hmm. A purely professional person doesn't care about anything else apart from the pay. Mm. Let's it's get the it kind done. of a doctor who mm. will switch off his phone at 8 p.m. Hello, it's my family time. And he doesn't care whether it was an accident or someone is dying. A passionate professional will have all their lines open. Sometimes they even work, it, it doesn't work very well with their families because they are too given into what they do until they neglect other areas of their lives. Mm. When you look at a coach, when you're looking for a coach, look at the interest that person is. Is that person interested in your change? Do they really believe that you can change or they just believe that you can pay? <laughs> that is the first indicator whether you're going to benefit or not. When someone is passionate about what they do, they will do it until they see change in your life. And that is what I always tell people. Look for a person, not even, not on, even for a barber shop, even for a hair designer. Look for a person who is passionate about whatever they are doing. Two things you will get. You'll get a lot of comfort because they will do it at ease. They won't harass you around. Number two, you will get there the excellence of the work that is being done. All right, so so as you look for a coach, go for pers a person who is very passionate about what they do. And they have your interest at and heart. And they have your interest at heart. Such so that will... you can walk to them and tell them, I might not be able to pay you at this month. Mm -hmm. Will you wait until next month? They will not tell you, go and come after. No. They can even do several sessions for free. Okay. After all, if you never walked into that office, they would still have eaten and paid their bills. All right. What type of coach are you? What type of a coach I am? Yes. As far as for the two, yes. I, my friend, I'm a passionate coach. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you why. Okay. I'm a passionate coach. The other day I was explaining to my, my mentor, mm -hmm. my coach. I have a coach also. And I'm sure an Aniona. <laughs> and I was telling them, the reason why sometimes I look like I'm not very serious with payments. I'm not saying that you don't pay. You will pay when you come to me. But <laughs> I usually say, this is a phone, right? Okay. And this handset is not a luxury. Everybody needs it. An old mama in the village who have been left by their children to rot there needs a phone to call and just find out how the, his, her children are. If I tag the price of these phone services at 10,000 shillings, whoever is below 10,000 will not access these services. And whoever is a billionaire will not pay more. Okay. Because the price is 10,000. Mm -hmm. But if I open it, leave it open, the very person who can't afford even a glass of water will come use this phone, make a call, finish and give me back the phone and tell me, God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate. That is the payment. I will look like I'm stupid. But wait until the most, the richest person, the, most, the greatest billionaire comes and uses the same phone. Because there's no price tag, they will pay as per their ability. When I count, the profit, the old mama has been paid for because I never tagged my services. Mm -hmm. 
my services have a price tag because Kenyans will never pay you until you give them the price. <laughs> what is your price tag? My friend, it goes across board from zero to millions. Okay. I look at you like this, so Michelle, it, it all and I know what you can afford. So you <laughs> <laughs> you're saving your clients, you're saving up your clients. <laughs> <laughs> Not so really, but by, by the way, those who have come to me, they'll tell you. When you come to me for services, oh, it I'll ask you. Kind of issues I'll like. even ask you to give me an offer. Oh. Mm -hmm. then like I look at you and I'm like, if I give my offer, it will be too small. So let me give give me a, an offer. And mostly, I don't go wrong. You give me more than I could have asked. Okay. Isn't it wisdom? Your personality is definitely a sanguine. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> but that comes with the passion. Mm -hmm. Unless you're passionate, let me say this clearly. If you're not passionate about something, you can never be creative in the same area. Okay. You will be limited and everybody will feel like you're getting stale in mm -hmm. whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right now, you never gave me a question, anything that we are going to discuss. I have not lacked something to say. Mm -hmm. We sit here up to midnight. Mm -hmm. I will talk. We'll talk. Let me, because me, it's a passion. Okay, Grace. Allow me to take you back to the the, the two different types of coach that mm -hmm. we have. We have the passionate and the professional. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the passional, mm -hmm. which you subscribe to, mm -hmm. do you feel like you don't feel like there should be a boundary between your clients and you? And because the kind of information they give you, the whatever they are going through, mm -hmm. it doesn't affect your personal life in any way. I will say this. And this is also a question that I've answered elsewhere. I've had people say that I can't handle three people a day because I get out of that place toxic. I'll say this as Grace Destiny. This is very different for me. I don't know about other people. But as for me, you come into my office. Normally, people give 45 to one hour, mm -hmm. or five minutes to one hour. That is for counseling and the normal therapy. 45 minutes to one hour. I give one and a half hours to two hours. Mm -hmm. You know why? I don't want you to leave me hanging. I don't want you to leave you hanging. Like we talk for one hour, I've come to realize for you to open up and really vomit everything you need to, you'll need an hour. I'll need to respond. So most people, they come and release everything the first session and you don't respond. So you remain with the garbage. Mm. That's why they get affected. Mm -hmm. But if, if you, you get another time for me to respond, I usually feel like we are heating, we are, we are boiling together. Mm -hmm. We boil together to some extent, then we start landing together. By the time you are leaving my office, we are both free. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've, I've gotten in your garbage and gotten it out. So by the time you are going, leaving my office, you leave me the way you found me. Someone else comes in. It doesn't affect my life. You know why? I've learned to separate you and me. Mm -hmm. I've also learned to help you separate you and the situation. So you come loaded with your situation. I help you offload the situation. You leave the situation here and you leave. So you go lighter. Mm -hmm. If you go lighter, you don't leave me with the situation. The situation goes to the garbage pit. I remain Grace, you go Michelle. That is how I do it and it works and it is possible. I don't know whether it's, you see, also I'll tell you this. A presenter is not just a presenter. Mm -hmm. Everybody have their flavor, right? Who you are, if someone else comes, sits there and does exactly what you're doing, they'll do it very differently. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their flavor. Maybe that's my flavor. Mm -hmm. okay. Because we are very different, especially if you're original with it. If it's a passion, it's inbuilt in you. You have a flavor that is so unique that nobody else can subscribe to. All right, let's speak about uh, the confid confidentiality uh -huh. for your clients. Yep. How sure are they that the information that we're going to give at the session is going to stay there at the session? Um, when you're created for something, you're equipped for it. All right. The wiring... <laughs> <laughs> the wiring determines. Mm -hmm. If you go to a counselor who will open up about what you said, check that person out. A natural coach and a counselor who is wired towards this, I, I will never, I'll feel, I'll feel like, you know the way you eat something bitter and then you, you burp, you belch. <laughs> that is how I feel with information. If you bring your teenage sister or brother to me, you're the one who have actually paid me for the train, for the coaching and therapy, and you want information from me, I'll terminate 
the contract. Because mm -hmm. if they never opened up to you, why do you want me to open up to you on their behalf? So there's a contract oh, yes. to be signed? Yes. yes, definitely. If you're coming for six months, we need to do a contract, give me some upfront, pay the rest after. But what I'm talking about is the confidentiality. Mm -hmm. It is an oath that should be very personal. It's not something that you read on a paper. As I said, the wiring is the same. You must be confident. Like myself, I, t I can talk about myself today. Mm -hmm. If you ask me about my life, I will open it like this. Like oh, a book. I know. You're a I don't you care. Speak. You, you know what? Everything. I don't care. Some of my <laughs> problems and mistakes, I'm the one who have told people. Mm -hmm. Like they wouldn't have known. But I don't care because they don't define me. Mm -hmm. When it comes to your issues, I will not talk. Mm -hmm. It just can't come out of me because I'm wired for that. I have a container to contain that information. Alright. So when a client comes to you mm -hmm. during the first day, mm. What are the major two questions that you ask? The first one is, who are you? And the other one? They tell me, na 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 where are you going? Mm -hmm. Those are two important questions. Who are you? Where are you going? So they and the where are you going must mm -hmm. start from where are you coming from? Because you'll never know where you're going unless you know where you're coming from. We just found out two, two, two tips that you a and life you coach see, and <laughs> from a life coach. And you see, you this is general, mm -hmm. whether you're coming for marriage, relationships, career guidance, all that, those are the major questions. You should know who you are, yeah. where you're going, yeah. and where you're coming from. from because where you're coming from will definitely affect where you're going. Okay. And you should, uh, what about the issue of just handling, you know, your past before you... I knew that was the, the next future. question. <laughs> <laughs> so As people you say, up. forget your past. I am of a different opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can't just forget your past. You may find something similar cutting up with you in the future. Because mm -hmm. if your past is something, some mistake you made foolishly, if you don't tackle that, you'll do the same mistake foolishly ahead of you. So sit with your past, mm -hmm. negotiate with your past, bid your past goodbye. <laughs> you first sit and handle issues and yes, then, then you must settle goodbye. issues with your past, okay. then leave. All if right. you leave without settling issues, it will catch up with you. Because right. what you did, you can do again. Whatever mm. happened. Let me say something. Most of the things that affect our lives are personal. Mm -hmm. Many times we blame the world, we blame the devil, we blame other people. But most things that affect us are things that come from within us. If I come and tell you you are useless, and you sit there because you, are, you have been told you are useless, start, stop doing anything and start living a useless life, I'm not the problem. You believed it. So I said it, you chose to, to take it. Mm -hmm. If you chose not to take it, you'd have proved me wrong. So is it my problem or your problem? It's my problem. Thanks. How <laughs> can people find you on social media, reach out to you if they need to talk to you further about life coaching? For the Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, Grace, Destiny, Life Skills. Okay. Then YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. There are so many things you'll find on my YouTube. Grace, Destiny, Life Skills. All right. Those are my, my usernames on social media. Oh, yeah. I have an email. For those who would like to know, to write an email, very private, and that's where we used to hide everything before social media came and inboxing. GraceDestiny.gd79 at gmail.com. GraceDestiny.gd79 at gmail.com. And I have a number. I don't have two numbers. So people always ask, Nikipika and Takpata. Nyoi. Ata Wikipika. Not any part. 0724. 537, 530. 0724, 537, 530. Call me. If I don't pick your call, text. I don't miss texts. I'll answer even if it's after one week, depending on how many they are. Okay. I'll surely answer your message. Oh. Grace Destiny, Destiny Life Skills. And then I have a page, Destiny Life Skills. Grace Destiny, just, just you know, those names just play Simple. around, around, around with them. The names and Destiny. then 0724, they started calling. 0724, 537. 530. You 0742. I think they're confirming. Those are text. I can <laughs> we see you're confirm still calling. Yeah, we are confirming. <laughs> if I don't pick like this one, I'm not going to pick like a message. All right. Thank you very much, Grace Destiny, for creating time to be with us. Thank it was an amazing too, conversation. Thank you. And uh, it's true, we need a life coach in our lives. Very true. All right. Mm -hmm. So, guys, back at home, that is Grace Destiny. She's a life coach. Make sure you reach out to her. Amisema, which is an Aza Magina, Grace Destiny, across all our social media handles, and you'll get her. So, make sure you stay tuned. We have much more right here on Why in the Morning. You don't want to miss us, so don't touch that out.